Well, we're joined now by the director of the pro-immigration pressure group, Migration Matters, Atul Hadwal, and by Patrick O'Flynn, the chief political commentator of the Daily Express, who is standing as a UKIP candidate in the European elections. Welcome to you both. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Patrick, let me start with you. Uh, where's the flood? The flood of Romanians and Bulgarians. Well, I looked at the calendar this morning. It was January the 2nd, uh, and uh, the only reports we have to go on are what happened on January the 1st. So if you're telling me there wasn't an enormous... But do you really people. expect these huge numbers to come? I mean, you know, we had more than a million people back in 2000. I mean, it's we not do. going to be as big as that. No, because it's, most it, of them are really going is. to Italy and France and Germany, as we know. Well, we don't know where most of them will go. We know where most but of them are going. But they're going there already. Today. But yeah. we also know those Eurozone economies are doing very badly and have very poor prospects, employment, incomes, economic activity. Uh, so uh, it's not just a question of Romanians and Bulgarians coming here. There's Euro area, so-called Euro refu refugees who would like to come here. There's already been a big upsurge of EU migration into Britain. And so we, we really don't know the numbers. I go with Andrew Green, who was much mm. closer than the official forecast last time, and he says an extra 50,000 a year. So Atul, given those numbers, isn't there a legitimate fear to be expressed here by British workers who say, hang on a minute, you know, the, this is our island, this is where we are, where we live, we pay the taxes, we're British citizens, these guys are taking away our jobs? Well, I think there are two things here. Number one, there's a debate about the numbers. Now, UKIP are on record as having made a projection of 300,000 coming in, in over the course of the, the next year. There's uh, leaflets being put through people's doors from by UKIP saying 29 pe million people can now come to the UK. Uh, and so you're saying this is fear-mongering? It's, it's absolute scaremongering and the debate oh. has been dominated, has been uh, characterised by hy hyperbole and hysteria driven principally for UKIP's uh, partisan political purposes. Now there is a debate about how we manage change in this country with migration. And those are valid concerns but we can't have that debate if we are so far away from the facts. The accusation against you then, Patrick, is that your party and your newspaper are thriving, are thriving on this kind of fear-mongering. What do you right. say to that well, accusation? For a start, the fact, it is just a fact, 29 million people can come. Nobody has said 29 million people or anything like that will come. But I, I make no apologies. But isn't apologies. that a big difference, can and will? Well, of course it is. In the, the leaflet says can. Now, I make no apologies for UKIP and the Daily Express, but particularly in this context, UKIP putting on the ballot paper a different choice from the choice of the Lib Lab Con, which is to have open door immigration to two dozen countries on continental U Europe, including some of the poorest countries of Eastern Europe. UKIP is going to offer a different choice for those electors Pat who are fed up with Lib Lab Con unity on this Patrick, issue. Patrick, so do you disavow the projection UKIP have put out uh, this time last year that there'll be 300,000 migrants? Well, I don't, I don't recognise that. It doesn't ring a bell with me, and I think it's more likely that 300,000 would be a projection over a full parliamentary term, which I think is it, what it roughly was, in Andrew it, Green's it, ballpark. It was, it, was put, it was put out by your then, one of your then spokespeople, Godfrey Bloom, who made a very clear statement, 1.5 million, 300,000 a year, net right. new no, migrants. Well, so, can, shall I answer okay, that? Quickly, I yeah. would just quickly say that, that it's certainly true that it's by no means uh, unheard of for Godfrey to be on the sort of exaggerated end of okay. argument. Now, let me put it to you like this. There are 400,000 Brits living mainly in retirement in Spain using hospitals and doctors' health care for free. Should they be sent home? Should they be welcomed by Spain? Well, well actually... Uh, and they're not getting the kind of publicity against them that we're giving to Bulgarians and Romanians in this country. No, but they tend to have occupational pensions and uh, are fairly welcome in Spain, which is a country with a much lower density of population than Britain. The thing about freedom of movement is it worked roughly OK when you had countries of broadly comparable economic uh, advance. But when we, we let in countries of Eastern Europe, and these are the two poorest who've acquired these rights yet. Yeah, that, that created a really major okay. problem. Uh, so one final question. I mean, isn't it the case that this country has become a nation of immigrants by stealth, but not by design, unlike the United States? And there's a real problem here, because we've become a multicultural uh, society of immigrants, but we haven't actually called a spade a spade, and perhaps the government should. Well, I think, I don't know how it it's really by stealth because the, the, yeah, we're members of Europe, the terms of that are very clear. We set our own migration policy for uh, migrants coming from outside Europe. The parties all have clear, uh, clear policies on that. Where, where the problem is in this country is that our debate has become characterised by anecdote, perception and not the facts. And actually there are real benefits to okay. migration. And those aren't ever debated. Got to, gentlemen, got to leave it there, I'm afraid. Lots to discuss, no time to do it. Um, Patrick O'Flynn, um, Atul Hatwell, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.